with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up to a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzlingly white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice, this is my beloved son, listen to him. Suddenly looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to tell what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Our gospel for the second Sunday of Lent is always the story of the Transfiguration. This event took place on top of Mount Horeb in Israel. And if you ever have opportunity to go there, you go to the bottom of the mountain and there's a parking lot with taxis and they take you to the top of the mountain. The only problem is the road twists and turns along the edge of the mountain with no guardrail and they're going up 35, 40, 45 miles an hour and other taxis are coming down and you just close your eyes and pray. When you get to the top, there's a small parking lot where they turn around and then you turn to go to the, um, to the rest of the mountain and you discover that there was a Roman city there 2,500 years ago. And you begin to go to the Church of the Transfiguration by going through a 2,500 year old Roman arch. And then ahead of you is a cobblestone street that is probably about half as wide as this church. And it goes from the arch all the way to the end of the Church of the Transfiguration. And as you walk along on either side of you are ruins from the ancient Roman town. There might be some pillars standing, some walls, some stone that has fallen, etc. And eventually you get to the Church of the Transfiguration, which sits right at the edge of the top of the mountain. It's a very strange building architecturally. When you go into it, you, there's a broad set of marble stairs that just keep going down and down and down and down. And finally you get to the floor and you're looking to the back of the church and the altar is not here like it is normally, but there's an arch with a balcony and the altar is up there. Then on the back side of the church is a terrace and you can go out on that terrace and the view over the Sea of Galilee, etc., is absolutely incredible. You can see as far on a clear day to the Mediterranean. I've eliminated one aspect in going to the top of Mount Horeb, and that is as you're driving up, about every 75 feet, if you look on the side of the mountain among the rocks and the craggy uh, foliage that is growing, sits a soldier with a gun aimed all the way up the mountain. And when you get to the top, there's a soldier with a gun on either side of the archway. And as you walk down the broad cobblestone street, every 50 or 75 feet, there sits a soldier with a gun. And if you go out on the terrace behind the Church of the Transfiguration to behold that incredible view, there at each end of the terrace is a soldier with a gun. Does it not seem that God gives us perfection? something sacred and holy happened atop that mountain. When you're up there, all you can hear is the rustling of the leaves and the chirping of birds, and you know you're in a pious, in a holy setting, but they've turned it into an arsenal because people can't learn to live with one another's differences. And has that not always been our history? They tell us now we're destroying the environment by releasing too many gases into the atmosphere. As a result, the ice is melting, the oceans are rising. And all around the world, there are strange uh, weather-related phenomena. 
It occurs now every year in areas of India and Pakistan, etc. Incredible, unprecedented flooding that displaces tens upon tens of thousands of people every year. The Philippines experienced the worst cyclone in its history a year or two ago. If you go to Southern California, there's an unprecedented drought. And in Sao Paulo, Brazil, the second largest city in Brazil, there is not a drop of water left for people. Australia is being ravaged by unprecedented fires. And look at the bitter, bitter cold we have just experienced. And so we ask ourselves, why does God let people suffer so much with these things? Is it God's fault or is it man's? Amen.